This impressively orange tiny laptop is a Sony VAIO VPC P11 ALJ. Catchy. And when it was released in 2010, it was both extremely expensive and woefully underpowered. And even though it could barely do anything 15 years ago, I think we could have some fun with it. So today, let's install the equally diminutive and thematically appropriate Puppy Linux and see if we can have any semblance of a modern computing experience. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy slow, outdated, but fashionable computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Sony exited the computer business back in 2014, and I think that's a darn shame. We've covered some pretty weird VIOs on this channel before, but I think that this thing is my favorite. Originally released in 2009 and updated to this in 2010, the VIO VCP P series was an engineering marvel and a terrible computer. It packs an Intel Atom Z530 or Z540 at around 1.86 gigahertz, Intel GMA500 graphics, and two gigs of RAM. Mine has a 128 gigabyte SSD, but it's PETA instead of SATA, and it's pretty slow. Now, this thing originally shipped with Windows 7, but I've installed Windows 10, which was a mistake, because it's comically slow. And that's why, I want to use Puppy Linux because Puppy Linux just might be able to turn this thing into a usable modern Linux machine. But let's take a little tour of this thing first because as you might imagine, it has some interesting quirks. Now, I first became enamored with this tiny little Sony VAIO after watching a video by This Does Not Compute where Colin actually gave this less than a stellar review but I couldn't help but notice that this tiny laptop has a lot in common with another favorite tiny laptop of mine, the Toshiba Libretto. I mean, these two seriously could be cousins. And I don't just mean in size and form factor, but check it out. The mouse on this VAIO is here, just like the mouse on the libretto, and I <laughs> forgot I installed Apple Rhapsody on this thing. The keyboard keys are very similarly sized, although this is a bit bigger and nicer, thanks to the ultra-wide, bizarre aspect ratio. But yeah, how cool is this? Now aside from the interesting trackpad and mouse button positioning, there are a lot of other weird things about this tiny computer, and I'll start with some of the very convenient switches and buttons on here. Power button is up top, along with your status LEDs, and you'll also notice that there is a track point and mouse buttons here. Unfortunately, you need the custom Sony software to use these, and I didn't install that on this Windows 10. There are also shortcut buttons for web, some sort of keyboard button and assist. One of these is supposed to zoom in the screen, although again, it's not configured here on Windows 10. On the front, we have a memory stick slot and an SD card slot. And then over here, very nice to see a wireless on and off switch. Just look how tiny this battery is. And this is actually a 2500 milliamp battery, which is higher capacity than I would expect. And also it works. And the screen on this thing is actually quite nice. It's a very nice bright LCD with a <laughs> admittedly pretty weird resolution of 1600 by 768. And uh, playing around with this in Windows 10 kind of brings up the big issue here. <laughs> it is painfully slow. Everything takes time. Trying to launch an application is, well, it's torture. But this is exactly the kind of machine that Puppy Linux is intended for, and I think we can have some totally normal computing. Now, Puppy Linux has been around for a long time, since the early 2000s, and in fact, I think I first encountered it on a pack-in CD on a Linux magazine I was subscribed to. Wow, I feel old. 
And Puppy Linux is pretty interesting because it's not exactly a Linux distribution. In fact, it's almost more of a philosophy. Different versions of Puppy Linux are actually basically distributions in their own right, and you can get individual pups that are based on different distros like Slackware, Debian, and Ubuntu. And what sets Puppy Linux apart is that it's meant to run from RAM. And especially back in the day when computers had old spinning hard drives, this could make for a very, very fast Linux experience on very old underpowered computers. So I flashed a 32-bit version of the Ubuntu-based Bionic pup, and uh, we're gonna see how well that runs here on this very underpowered Sony Vio. All right, so far so good. We'll choose Bionic Pup 32. And here we see it's copying pup upup 1903.sfs to RAM. That's the system. Popping the system itself into memory, and that's where it's going to run from. And in fact, a totally normal use case for Puppy Linux is to run it all the time off of a USB stick and have kind of a portable Linux install that you can take with you and run on just about anything. All right, we are now connected to the internet. Puppy Linux has a web browser installed. Yeah, this browser is based on a pretty old version of Firefox. Very stripped down, but should be very responsive on this system. However, if we want to install a different browser, like say Chromium, we can use the Puppy Package Manager which gives us access to a couple different repositories. So let's say we want to search for Chromium. We can install it right from here. But I am not actually going to install the Ubuntu version of Puppy Linux on here because it's missing something that I kind of really need. Specifically, this doesn't let me use apt-get but the Debian Bookworm version does. And that's the version I think I'm actually going to install on here and leave as the sole operating system. All right, and we are booted into the Debian Bookworm version of Puppy Linux. And I just have to say, this is a beautiful looking desktop actually with Conky over here. And uh, this is Joe's Window Manager, JWM, which is very minimalistic, very lightweight, but also very classic and nice looking. We have our desktop switcher here, a application menu here. Everything is very responsive. All right, so I've invoked Puppy Installer here from the command line. I'm gonna install right to the internal SSD. And here we are in our brand new locally installed Puppy Linux Bookworm 32-bit. And uh, before we get too far into this, I wanna get some quirks out of the way first. We're actually going to restart the system immediately, and it's going to ask us about saving our session. We're gonna click save, and we're gonna save into a folder, which you can also save into a single file if you're running totally from RAM. But since we have an SSD and we're a full install, we're saving into a folder. And that's a quirk of how Puppy Linux works because generally you'd be running Puppy Linux completely out of memory and when you shut down you need to save the stuff from RAM to somewhere persistent and that would be the save file or in our case a save folder. Now the other really important thing to note about Puppy Linux is that by default you are running everything as root. Now some may say that is horrifying and I'm not smart enough to really understand the reasoning behind this design decision, but it's a design decision they made nonetheless, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have to live with it. I guess I won't be taking this little computer with me to DEF CON, but now we have apt, which means we can install regular stuff from the regular Debian repositories, and there is no sudo or anything, so we can just do apt update, which it is worth noting, you could install just Debian Bookworm 32-bit on here, no problem, but I don't think it would be as fast as Puppy Linux is here. 
Kind of ironic that we're downloading things from Debian security. All right, NeoFetch shows us that we're running Bookworm Pup i686 with a dual core Atom Z560 at 2.133 gigahertz. Interesting. Yeah, look at that, 228 megs for this running system. That's pretty impressive. We'll get some development tools, get and build essential. We'll also install Chromium because I'm curious if we can get any kind of reasonable YouTube playback on here. All right, honestly, this is not bad. Not great, <laughs> not particularly readable on this tiny screen, but we're browsing the internet in modern Chromium, something certainly not possible in the Windows 10 install that I had on here that was slower than molasses. Oh, hey, it's that video where Colin from This Does Not Compute uses basically the same laptop and calls it the awful Tiny Vio. Heh, that's a pun. It's weird that this is both painfully slow and doing way better than I expected. <laughs> well, it's trying to play. All right, resolution was already at 144p. <laughs> That's as low as it will go, which is actually an acceptable resolution for this extremely tiny screen. All right, well, I'm not gonna say that this is great, but it does work. And what more can we ask for from a little potato such as this? Okay, so there is no way that this thing is gonna play a game like Minecraft because it's a dual core Atom computer with no fan. So I'm gonna try something almost as ridiculous. I'm going to compile Classic Cube from source and see if we can play, well, the next best thing to Minecraft. Okay, so for some reason I can't find limits.h. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to download the 32-bit pre-compiled version. All right, extracting Classic Cube. And uh, let's close Chromium to give this as much juice as possible. Hey, look at that. Classic Cube 136 is loading. All right, well, speed is a bit of an issue. We're currently running at about three frames per second. I don't think we can change the resolution. And uh, I bet the weird resolution on this machine is not helping. But hey, it runs. Okay, so I'm honestly kind of torn about this thing. On one hand, it's a terrible computer, pretty much unusable for anything modern. But on the other hand, it's incredibly cool. I mean, just, it's tiny and almost unnervingly small. I mean, the screen's a little bit small to read, but it's just so freaking cool. And having a modern Linux on here that boots up relatively quickly could be useful. I mean, the battery works on this thing. It can be a portable Linux terminal with the option to occasionally whip out a modern Chromium web browser if needed. So I don't know. I'm going to continue playing with Puppy Linux on this thing, but I'm kind of curious. Can this run the 32-bit version of Haiku? In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Graham, Drew Hamlin, James Laurie, George Rosansky, Jesse Azell, Matthew Crowell, April White, James Fryman, Andrew Nicholson, Scott Cedarbaum, Frodo Jedi, Lyle Truid, Unknown Soldier 41, Tom Woodfin, Alex Hoffman, Veronica Explains, Paul Spencer, Control Alt Reese, Ryan, Chris Biggs, Jason Papez, Scott Thompson, Camel Rakowski, Chris Nelson, Greg from Rut K Mods, Chris Calderon, and Gaspar Heller, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.